<clears throat> How we doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. Gina, what does it mean to you to hear your NFC player of the month? Uh, well, on behalf of uh, myself, Shane Waldron, the offensive line, our offense, um, um, you know, I'll, I'll gladly accept that. Um, you know, it just means we've been playing well as an offense, um, and, you know, we got to continue that. We got to keep it going. You said after the game, I think it was the Chargers game, you talked about, you know, the rookie class and just how they hit every pick. To see two rookies named Rookie of the Month, what is that like? That's outstanding. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen that before. And, uh, you know, it means that we've drafted well, obviously. I think that's been the history here. But also, um, the coaching speaks volumes to the coaching, getting those guys ready to play, and then to the individual for going out there and making the plays and um, taking the coaching and, you know, putting all those, those things to use. And so, um, you know, we got a lot of really good rookies, and they're contributing, all of them are, uh, in different ways. And, uh, you know, it's really fascinating to see. Learn as the season's gone along, in particular about Kenneth and just who he is and what type of player he is. Yeah, as as the season's going along, um, I'm learning that Kenneth uh, Walker is just a, a tremendous player, but also a tremendous human being. Uh, he studies hard, works hard. You know, he wants to be coached. He asks the right questions, uh, and, and I, I think his career is going to continue to just continue to blow up, and uh, the sky's the limit for him. Um, he's got all the athletic ability. Uh, he's tough. Uh, he can run between the tackles, get outside the tackles, make guys miss, and he's also a really good uh, pass catcher and in protection. And so uh, he's going to continue to grow and get better, which is, I think, scary because he's already pretty good. Statistically, Arizona held your offense down a little bit compared to some other games last time. But what, I guess looking back on that game, what did they do in that game that you guys maybe got to do better? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, thinking about that game, um, they presented us with a bunch of different, you know, fronts and different uh, situational challenges. Uh, you know, I can remember being down in the red zone, and obviously it was, you know, right before the half. And so they were backed up, you know, really pretty much playing the goal line. But uh, we, we didn't do great in the red zone uh, in that game. And so that's something we got to improve on. Uh, really throughout the ent entire season, we haven't, you know, been that great in the red zone. And so we just got to keep getting better in the red zone and really finishing drives. Uh, finishing drives with touchdowns, not settling for field goals, and uh, also doing really good on third down. You know, you're getting a lot of attention for potentially an NFL comeback player of the year. Do you feel like you're coming back from anything? What do you feel like you're coming back from? If you're uh, I just think it's me having a chance to play now. Um, you know, I'll, uh, the attention and all that stuff, I'm not really feeling it. Uh, I've just been focused on what I'm doing inside this building. But uh, I think it's more so just people seeing me play. Uh, I haven't played in a, a bunch of t years, and uh, aside from preseason, and um, you know, I think people are now getting a chance to see me play in this offense with these type of players. And I think it's more so just all of us doing well, uh, more than just myself. When you, those, you have, go ahead, Bob. I'm sorry. I was gonna say you obviously have just a one-year contract and all that. This, do you ever think about this season and kind of you know what the future holds and what it might mean for you beyond this year? Oh, uh, I don't really live my life like that. Um, you know, I'm always focused on what I got to do today and tomorrow. Uh, you know, those things will come. Time will tell. You know, time will tell with all that. But uh, for me, I just got to stay focused on what I'm doing in here, and that's working hard and leading this team and, uh, you know, going out there and, and competing to get wins. In the seven years you weren't regularly playing, what kept your azimuth focused? What what had you on the path for seven years? Uh, I mean, being in the NFL, <laughs> it's a – you know, it's a day to you know day to day thing, man. You got to be on it every single day. Um, a lot of people wish they're in this position, and uh, you know, I'm grateful to have worked myself into this position. Um, also, knowing who I am, um, I'm very set in who I am. I know exactly who I am and what I can do, and so I've never uh, bought into the narratives that've been out there. I didn't just get this good over you know the course of one off season. So, um, you know, I think that's mostly a narrative, and a lot of this stuff is media driven. But when it comes down to me. Um, People where I'm from know who I am. West Virginia, I just got indu ind inducted into the College Hall of Fame. Um, so people in college football know who I am. New York Jets as well, Giants, Chargers, and, and Seattle. So, um, you know, people have continued to let me know that you just stay work, keep working hard, and, you know, things will happen for you. And so that's what I did. Gino, how has your relationship with Pete, has it changed when you first got here, or has it just been? Uh, my relationship with with Pete has been the same, which is which is awesome. Um, he's always been the same guy. 
I think Pete does a tremendous job at coaching every guy on the team. He has a relationship with every single guy, no matter who it is, every guy in the building, really. And uh, I think that's what makes him such a special coach is that he, he knows the importance, you know, of, of relationships. And uh, he makes sure that, you know, you feel seen, you feel felt and heard. And uh, that's the sign of a great leader. What does it tell you about Will Disley's fifth year starter? Got a pretty good contract this last offseason, and he's out there on punt coverage running down yeah. for some fumbles. You know, I think Will's one of the, uh, you know, I don't know if this is the right word, but unsung heroes of the team. Um, just the things that he does from a leadership standpoint to the way that he blocks in the run game. Uh, he's, he's very unselfish, willing to pass protect as well. And then um, obviously when he goes out there as a receiver, he's, you know, he can make all the, uh, run all the routes, make all the catches and, and present matchups uh, that are favorable for our offense. And so to see him run down on kickoff and, and punt and, you know, be a part of the special teams, that's who he is. That's who he is. That's what he does. Uh, he's a team first guy and he's a leader and uh, he's willing to do whatever it takes to win. Not every team has three tight ends that you can run a, a three tight end formation. What do you like about the formation and what do each of those guys bring to that when they're on the field together? Yeah, I think uh, that, for, you know, having those guys, three, uh, three really good tight ends, I think it gives us a lot of versatility. Uh, we're able to line up in multiple uh, packages and, uh, you know, they're all good. You know, they all can be starters in this league um, and, and they do a great job at collectively just working together. Um, but I think overall, man, just all, each one of those guys are unique in their own way, but they all bring, uh, you know, added dimension to our offense, which is, you know, we got power and speed when you talk about those guys. They all can run and catch, but they're also really good blockers. And, uh, you know, I'm not a D coordinator, but I, I would imagine it presents, you know, some some challenges when you, you know, have to figure out, you know, what the package is versus, you know, the, the looks and the play and all that type of stuff. When you think back to the last time you played Arizona, what were the lessons learned? I know that they got to you. They were really aggressive up front. What do you take away from that? Yeah, um, you know, starting with me, uh, just getting the ball out in rhythm and on time, um, making sure that uh, I'm not holding the ball too long back there, uh, obviously making, you know, fast and decisive reads and then getting the ball out of my hands and also just finishing drives, you know, finishing in the red zone, being better on third down and uh, overall, you know, whatever it takes to win. But obviously I felt like I could have played better um, in that game. And so, uh, you know, just improving on the things from, from that game and, and seeing if we can get better in this one about this offense in particular and what is it about this offense you think brings out the best of you? Uh, I think uh, it's a, you know, a bunch of different things. It's a great question. I think it starts with our offensive coordinator and our staff, our offensive staff. Um, they do a great job at putting us in positions to be successful. Um, they study hard, they work hard all week and have been coming up with uh, great game plans. And you talk about the offensive line up front, um, you know, protection, communication, uh, the way we're running the ball. Uh, the way we're pass protecting, all those things um, makes my job a lot easier. Um, having weapons on the outside, having running backs in the backfield um, who are dynamic uh, just makes, you know, life easier. You just go out there and do your job. Um, you know, don't have to force things because those guys will make enough big plays in the game. When you would come across uh, former coaches or teammates uh, or whatever in the years that you were a backup, would they let you know hey, you're going to get your time or kind of just reinforce how mm -hmm. good you know you can be? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Opposing coaches, coaches on my team, players, all that. Um, but also, without that, I've already known who I was. And uh, my confidence doesn't change no matter what someone says, whether it's good or bad. I'm always going to remain myself and just continue to do what I do all the time. You know, do you remember the first moment Ken did something on the field that kind of wowed you or stood out to you? made you go like, oh, look yeah. at that? Yeah, it was uh, training camp. Uh, training camp, we gave, we gave him like a toss to the left. And uh, he put his foot in the ground, went, you know, went right, put his foot in the ground, went back left, went back right. And it was like, not many people can do that. I, you know, I'll probably tear something if I try to do something like that. Um, the, the guy's just special, man. He's got a uh, unique ability. And, uh, you know, he, he, he's also just equally a hard worker and just a great person. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's great for him to be able to, uh, you know, have this type of success and also for our team, you know, because he's, he's a big part of it. We haven't seen a whole lot of him like catching the ball out of the backfield, but before he went down in the summer, it did look like he could be pretty effective there. What have you seen from him in that regard? Yeah, he uh, he can, he can. Um, obviously, you know, we're, you know, we got to use him in protection sometimes, and uh, DJ and Homer they also come in sometimes and, and play that role of pass catchers. But he's equally uh, as as good as at it um, as those guys, and so you know, it just hasn't happened yet. But uh, I, I assume it will, you know, at some point. It looked like he threw a really good block. 
the throw to Tyler that was incomplete, but it looked like he picked up the ball. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. He's, he's been great all year in uh, pass protection. He knows who to go to. He understands the calls, and uh, he, he's tough. He'll, he, he's willing to go up in there and, you know, put his body on the line for us to, you know, get that third down or get a first down or, you know, or, or score a touchdown uh, if we need it. What did you think of DK's acting skills on the touchdown run? Man, that, that was cool. It wasn't the first time I've seen DK do that, but uh, it's cool to see that, you know, just to have that awareness and that savviness. Just, you know, he's kind of looking back, seeing Ken, and he's like, oh, you know, looking for the ball. And so to have that savviness, man, it, it just speaks to who he is, and uh, he knows what he's doing out there. And so uh, it was pretty cool to see it, man. It was a funny moment, but, uh, you know, it helped us score, and that, that was the main point. For this rookie class to have so much success, does it show that when you first start in this league, it's important to kind of just be thrown out there and not so much learn on, under older guys and instead just be thrown right into the fire? Uh, I mean, I think you can say it both ways. There's been cases where guys have sat and done well. There's been cases where guys have played right away, done well, and vice versa. So I don't think you can necessarily say one way or the other. But I will say that having these guys out there and learning on the, you know, basically on the fly, uh, getting experience in games, um, getting you know a lot of game reps, uh, is helping them. It's helping them get better, and it's uh, you know it's, it's helping that learning cur curve be a lot faster than it probably would have. You were teammates with Chenna down with the Chargers. To see him have this kind of breakout here, what does it what does it say to you to have him have this kind of performance that he's had over the last few weeks in the year he's had here? So far? Uh, you know, I I really thought Chenna did a great job. You know, I was with him his rookie year, and uh, you know that year we played uh, the Ravens in the playoffs. And he sealed the game for us, a strip sack on Lamar Jackson, sealed the game. And, you know, he was pretty good then. And you see now he's uh, gotten a lot more experience. Uh, he's a lot more sure of himself. He knows what to do. And uh, he, he's been a dynamic player on the edge uh, his entire life, really. Um, going, going back to USC, he's always been really good. And I think it's just special for him to be a part of this organization, this team that's allowing him to be himself and also go out there and make a, lo a lot of plays because he's, he's doing a f fantastic job. Is uh, are the uh, the Cardinals, especially under their current coordinator, maybe more multiple on their third down looks than, than other teams? Uh, I would say they're about the same as everyone else. You know, they uh, all the teams that we play are gonna give us uh, a bunch of looks and try and make the game as hard as possible, which they should. And so the Cardinals, yes, they do present a lot of challenges, and they do. They're very multiple. Uh, they're gonna show us some looks that we haven't seen in this game. Um, and so we've just gotta, like I always say. Uh, stick to our rules, uh, you know, go with what we see, communicate, and then obviously go out there and make the plays. But they have a really good defense, um, and they have a, a really good coordinator. And so they present a ton of challenges, and we got we to gotta be ready for them. How was the communication with Kyle when he had to step in with, for Austin on Sunday? It was awesome. You know, Kyle stepped in right away, um, took control, no hesitation, and that's what he does. I've, you know, Kyle and I have played together a bunch of games, uh, and, and, and he's always been on it. He studies. He's ready. And uh, when his number's called, he always goes out there and does his job. On, the, on Kenneth's TD run, did you see it coming? He might, might cut that back and you're ready to throw a block there? Or? Yeah, I kind of learned with Ken just to always be ready for that. Um, you know, he's doing a great job at uh, – you know, he's doing a great job at obviously sticking to the reads, but he's so explosive and so dynamic that you never know where, he, where he'll end up. And so if I got a chance to throw a block for him and it wasn't that great of a block, but at least I got in the way, um, you know, it'll help him get in the end zone, then I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.